more warm tone looks, whereas I tend to pair this with cool tone looks. Hello. Good afternoon. So I thought I filmed this and then I went to go put the clips on my computer and realized that I was never actually recording. So today I'm gonna to be doing something a little different. I'm gonna be doing a ranking video for my blushes and highlighters. So I do wanna do this with my eyeshadow palettes as well, but I have one more palette that I want to have as palette of the month and get my full thoughts on it before I do that. So that'll be coming probably sometime the end of April, early May. So if you are not new here, or if you are, uh, my makeup philosophy is more like, I like to have my bases covered, but I'm also a fan of having a curated collection. So I don't have like an entire drawer full of blushes. I have four and then I have five highlighters and then a palette. So I figured we'll just put the blushes and the highlighters in the same video. Just as a note, it is snowing outside and I think I can hear one of my neighbors shoveling. So I don't know if we'll be able to pick it up on the mic. And before I get into it, I just wanna give the same disclaimer that I gave in my underrated or overrated product video. And that is that these are just my opinions. They're based on my experiences and my preferences and also my face and hair. So if I'm, ranking one of your favorite products lower, that's okay. These are just, you know, my opinions and it's nothing personal and we can agree to disagree. There's also nothing in here that I actively dislike. There are just a few products that I maybe would not repurchase or would repurchase in a different color. So having said all that, let's start off with the blushes. So I have four, um, so this should go by pretty quickly, although I do have thoughts and opinions as always. So I have four and coming in at number four would be the Milani Rose Powder Blush and looks like this and I have the shade T Rose and I know a lot of people really like this. I was not knocked out by this especially because for a drugstore product this is 16 or 17 dollars which is much more than I would expect and that's not including our 15 percent tax here. You do get a ton of product but I'm not entirely sure that it is worth the money. It's a very dry formula which is not necessarily a problem because it does apply really nicely and it blends out nicely and it looks pretty nice and natural, but it doesn't last very long on me. And I also have to go in like three or four times with my brush to get the amount of pigment and payoff that I would like, which I feel like it doesn't get a whole lot paler than I am. So I feel like that's not, that's not a good sign. Um, if I have to work really hard to get the color payoff that I want. It also doesn't last on me, which I don't normally have an issue with things breaking down on me just because I am on the dry side of normal for most of the year so I don't really have a ton of oils coming through and where I'm placing this is not a place is not a part of my face that gets oily so I just find that this does need to be touched up and it fades really quickly and it's just not very pigmented so for that reason it's coming in at last place having said that I do definitely plan on continuing to use it and I think probably because I have to use so much of it it is one of those things that I could conceivably hit pan on possibly finish all the way who knows but yeah, just think a little, little overrated, a little bit too expensive for what it is. And I think, especially with the price point, with the price point, I feel like there are probably better options at the drugstore. Okay, so next up I have ColourPop Super Shock in between the sheets and it just looks like this. And this is a really, really pretty color. It's very natural and it works really, really well with my skin tone. It's a really nice mix of being pink and also um, nude, really nice everyday color, definitely enjoy the color on my skin. I just find the formula, it's a little bit stiff and I find it's a little bit hard to blend into my skin. So I find that applying this, you have to work quite fast because it dries and then once it dries, it is set. So it does have longevity going for it. It really doesn't move once it's on, but I find that you have to work really fast with it and it is hard to blend out evenly. I find that it does work better if you're wearing some kind of foundation or tinted moisturizer, but those aren't part of my daily routine. I obviously I um, have a few that I'm trying to finish up as part of Project Pans, but I am not normally a foundation or tinted moisturizer girl. So I find that this, most of the time when I'm wearing this, I am wearing it over bare skin. And I just find that it, I'm never quite happy with how it looks once it's on. So for that reason, it is coming in at number three, just because it's a lot of effort and it's harder to work with than I would like. I am lazy and I feel like for cream blushes, there are probably at least with my skin type, better options out there. Okay, so for number two, we've got my Bare Minerals Gen Nude Powder Blush, and you have me at Rillo, and it's this color right here. I really like these. I think that these are super underrated, and I don't see them talked about as much, which is unfortunate because I think for Sephora, they're a very good price point, and it's just a really nice blush. I mean, I find that this, for 
my skin tone I just apply this with a light hand and a fluffy brush and it looks fine it's a little bit more intense than some of my other blushes but it's still definitely wearable and it just gives you that nice sort of flush look like you've been outside which I personally really enjoy especially this time of year and yeah I find that it stays on all day blends into the skin really nicely and is not overly powdery but the only reason this isn't number one is just because it's definitely not a color that I reach for every day and I think I might have spoiled what my number one blush is in my March Shop My Stash, but it is the Melt Cosmetics Matte Powder Blush in Honey Thief, which just looks like this. Now this is a really, really powdery formula. When I first got this, I was used to having to really dig in for the Milani blush and kind of went into this really enthusiastically, and there is a lot of kick up if you are not prepared for it, so I just go in really lightly, but I find that this, despite being very a very powdery formula, it does blend in really nicely. I am a big fan of peach shades on my skin tone. I think that if you have any kind of green or yellow in your undertones, a peach blush really looks very healthy and natural and doesn't pull the green in your undertones. Whereas if I'm not wearing a foundation, some of sometimes the Bare Minerals one and the Tea Rose one will really pull like the fact that around my mouth is quite green. So, but this does not do that. So it's just a really nice, like natural, healthy looking color, not too intense but also nice and pigmented. I will say with Melt, I find that they are very, very good at creating pigmented products that still blend really nicely, and this is no exception. I wish they had more colors in this line, in this, in their powder blush line, but I'm also definitely curious to check out their cream blushes because I think that's a direction that I'm moving more in. So yeah, definitely really enjoy this one. Would recommend, and also not crazy expensive by Sephora standards. So yeah, those are my blushes. So I just swatched everything out. And these are my blush swatches. So this top one right here is the Milani Rose Powder Blush in Tea Rose. This is ColourPop Super Shock in Between the Sheets. This is the Bare Minerals Gen Nude Powder Blush and You Had Me at Merlot. And this is Honey Thief by Milk Cosmetics. Oh my god, my legs are falling asleep. Okay, so moving on to my highlighters. I have five regular highlighters and then a palette, which I will just be counting as one. So let's just start off with my least favorite, and that is going to be the Fenty Beauty Kilowatt Highlighter in Metal Moon, which looks like this. It looks like it's straight white. It's really, really not. Um, this is really interesting because it has a fairly translucent base, and so when you apply it, it actually applies as like a white gold kind of color, which I like. It's definitely one of her more subtle highlights. I've heard that a lot of people like the Fenty Beauty highlights because they are really bright and blinding and in your face. This is definitely subtle. So I think if I'm doing anything that is in a more professional setting <laughs> this summer or ever, I think that this would be a really good choice for that because it definitely is not very in your face, but it is nice if you want like a lit from within glow. So I really do, I do like this. However, I do find it does some weird things. I feel like I've already started to get hard pan on this and I haven't used it a whole lot and I clean my brushes at least once a week, so it's definitely not a dirty brush sort of situation. So I find that sometimes, yeah, you do have to kind of remove the hard pan with tape and in order to get color payoff. And the other thing that I find with this that is kind of weird and not something that I've experienced with a highlighter before is that in some lights, you just can't see it going on. So when I first got this, I was at my parents' place and I was doing my makeup in a room that had indirect lighting and I could not tell that I was putting this on and I kept on going back in and putting it on and and I couldn't tell. And then as soon as I went into another room that had more direct lighting, I was like, oh, I have like this, not quite a stripe, but it was definitely very visible and I had built it up quite a lot. So I think with this, what I've, what I've learned, the key is to apply it the way you normally would, go in once or twice, blend it out. Even if you can't necessarily see it on your cheeks, trust that it's there and then once you're in different lighting, it will show up. So yeah, it just kind of does a weird disappearing act sometimes. I've never experienced that before. So just, you know, something to, something to know, I guess. So I think number five is going to be the KVD Alchemist palette, which is this guy right here. I don't know if this is still on sale at Sephora. It was on sale at Sephora Canada for like 13 bucks for months. Uh, regular price is $44. I would not spend $44 on what is essentially an eyeshadow quad. Um, I do think these are really pretty. They do have a nice translucent base. So again, sort of like the Fenty. These are not as stark as they look like they could be. They are nice and translucent. They are also very, very pigmented. So you do definitely get color payoff that you don't necessarily see in the pan. And these are really fun. I really do enjoy using this for like a pop of color on my inner corners 
or as a cheekbone highlight or brow bone. Yeah, so the only reason that this isn't ranking a little higher is just because it's not really an everyday sort of color. I find that I've never really been let down with the quality of KVD. I think their quality is great, but they definitely do have some more of their products, and I would say this is sort of one of those. Definitely not something that I reach for on a daily basis, but every time I do reach for this, I really enjoy it. And what I will say that I find really interesting though is that the ultraviolet one is like very, very dark. Um, it's a little bit too dark for me, so I usually layer it over. I don't know if you can see that. Um, but it is like, it's really intense. It looks like ultraviolet light. Like, I don't know how they did that, and I don't know what kind of witchcraft, but it does straight up look like ultraviolet light. So very, very pretty, but yeah, you can see these are kind of like a duochrome. Um, definitely very intense, um, true to color, beautiful, but yeah, this, this, as you might imagine, this on my cheeks makes me look straight up green. Um, so I definitely do have to mix that with like a champagne, layer it over like a champagne highlight in order to not look like I'm, you know, the walking dead. So, but overall, yeah, I do like this, just ranking it a little bit lower because it's not necessarily the most everyday friendly palette, at least for me. Okay, so number four on this list is going to be my Becca Cosmetics Prismatic Amethyst Highlighter, and I was hoping, looks like this, this pulls a little bit more pink on me. In the brand swatches on Sephora, this looked like it was a little bit more blue-based, not as blue as the ultraviolet one from the KVD palette, but sort of somewhere in between, and this does pull a little bit more pink on me, which I'm not in love with, um, which is why this is ranking a little bit lower, but I do think this is a great formula. It's got a really nice translucent base, and, and it's, at least for me, it gives me the exact brightness of glow that I want without being too in your face. And it's just a nice twist um, because it's definitely not your everyday like champagne or gold highlight. Um, but because it's not an everyday color, I am ranking it a little bit lower. It does work really well with cool tones, but I think, okay, you know what? I've actually been on a cool tone kick recently, but for most of the year, I tend to gravitate more towards warm tones. So this definitely doesn't work with every single eye look, but every time I wear it, I do really enjoy it. So yeah, that's gonna be number four. Okay, so top three. Um, so. This is my poor beaten up <laughs> ColourPop Super Shock in Flexitarian. This has been through it. I um, I dropped this and then it came out and then when I went to use it, I'm wearing it today, and so when I went to open it up, all the product had fallen into the lid and then it fell out on my desk. So um, I did manage to squish it back in. We didn't lose too much, but my desk is glowing now. So anyway, um, this is really, these are really nice. I know that I mentioned that I'm not like the biggest fan of these Super Shock cream blushes, but boy, I really like their highlighter formula. The only reason this does, this doesn't rank higher for me, I think this could have number one or two potential if I had purchased something that was a little bit more golden. This looks like a nice champagne, but on me, it pulls very, very silver. So for that reason, it is ranking a little bit lower just because straight silver, at least on me, is not the most flattering. I prefer something either more champagne or slightly more golden, but I do really like this formula. It is obviously very, very bright. It's the only like true, I guess, metallic highlight that I have. And it's not glittery, which is great for me because I don't like a glittery highlight. Um, so I do definitely enjoy this. I think lunch money might be in my future at some point, but yeah, I do really enjoy this. I think it's, it's nice because if you go over it with a beauty sponge, you can sheer it out a little bit and get more of a natural look, or you can build it up to be a little bit brighter, which is what I have done. Just what I have done today. I've built it up to be a little bit brighter, um, but it really does sort of give you that wet look, which I am a big fan of. So definitely like this. Should have made maybe a smarter color selection, but I didn't realize how, they describe it as a champagne and it like, obviously it looks champagne, but it pulls like bright silver on me. So anyway, I think if I had picked something a little bit more golden-y, I think I would, this would de could definitely be a couple of spaces higher, but still really like it and I would like to finish it someday because yeah, I've been sort of neglecting it in my quest to finish some of my other highlighters and I put it into my shop, my stash, and I reached for it a few times and forgot how much I liked it. So I think number two is going to be my Wet n Wild Hello Halo in Halo Goodbye and it's like this neutral silvery pink color and I love this formula. It is beautiful and I think that if I had made a smarter color choice in this with something a little bit more gold or a little bit more champagne, this could potentially have been number one, but unfortunately I don't love a pink, pinker highlighter all the time. I will say with one coat of this, it doesn't really pull pink, but if you do layer it to make it a little bit brighter, it does definitely, you do start to see a little bit more of that pink cast, 
which at least on my skin tone is not my favorite thing. But I think when I bought this, I actually did buy this in store and I think under the really bright fluorescent lights, I think, I don't think that I realized how pink this was. I think this looked a little bit more like your classic champagne -y highlighter under those lights and then it wasn't until I purchased it and gotten it home where I was like, oh, um, this is pinker than I thought it was going to be. So I think, yeah, I think if I had made a smarter color choice with this, this could have been number one because it is really beautiful and it's just like a nice, like natural lit from within glow. Um, is my power gonna stay on or what? Anyway, um, so I do really enjoy this. I'm sort of iffy on how I feel about Wet n Wild, but I will say that I got handed to them. This is great. So number one, you guys might not be entirely surprised if you're not new here, and that is my Mary Luminizer by The Balm. Now, I'm not going to open this up because this is in my project pan, but I will swatch it. And um, yeah, I don't want to spoil my project pan update, so I'm not going to open this, but it is, this is, I think my, I think I feel, I feel pretty good about having this as my top for right now. I totally understand why this product has cult status. It is really, really pretty. It's just a nice everyday color has the right amount of glow. I think this could just be because I repressed it a couple of times and I went a little ham with the alcohol one of the times that I did it. So this definitely picks up more powdery now than it did when I first bought it. So I find that sometimes when I put it on, it can be a little bit powdery, but I think that's more of a repressing issue and then a formula issue. But this sort of, I find sinks into your skin and gives you a really nice, like almost wet effect. I do tend to build this up a little bit more, but yeah, really, really pretty, lovely product. I don't think I would repurchase this once I finish it. Um, just because it is a little bit too dark on me. It, I find if I put it on my cheekbones and I'm wearing blush, it's fine. But if I put it on my forehead or collarbones or anything like that, it does leave a little bit of a golden cast. I don't think I would repurchase it because it's not necessarily super fair skin friendly, but it is a really, really gorgeous formula and I have definitely really enjoyed using this. However, having said that, I think for somebody who is fairer, I personally prefer highlighters that have more of a translucent base, um, just so that you get glow without necessarily a ton of deposition of color and I find that this is yeah a little bit more pigmented than I would like although like I said could have just been because of the repressing but anyway yeah definitely do really enjoy this and this is my number one and I do feel good about that. Here's swatches round one so at the top here we've got the Fenty Beauty Kilowatt Highlighter in Metal Moon as you can see looks very looks white in the pan comes out like a really pretty like sheer white gold color. Then these are all from the KVD Alchemist palette. So I have pink opal, ultraviolet, blue sapphire, and green emerald. And... All right, so it's second round of highlighter swatches. Here we are. So this top one is the Becca highlight in Prismatic Amethyst. This is ColourPop Flexitarian. Halo Goodbye. Right here and Mary Luminizer. Okay, so now that my legs are completely asleep, I think I'm gonna wrap it up there. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you like my content, I upload new videos every Tuesday and sometimes on Saturdays. It would be super cool if you would consider liking and possibly subscribing, and hopefully I will catch you in the next one. Bye!